Hey there everybody, Don Evans here from LaunchReport.com and today we have the Nethens Lava Bronze Diver. 500 meters water resistant, 16 millimeter stick, 45 millimeters in width, 50 millimeter lug to lug, 24 millimeter lug width, Seiko NH35 automatic movement, you do have a sapphire crystal and a ceramic bezel and your price is $570. Now, I did do an unboxing on this watch. Uh, if you did not see that, you can go ahead and check it out. Uh, but uh, in the full review here, I'll just try and cover some of the things as usual that uh, you know I like, I dislike, and uh, the price and all of that. Now, I do have the crown unscrewed here, but I'll screw it back down. Uh, I was just uh, messing around with the watch a little bit before I started the video. One thing I will mention, uh, you can see grips here on the crown. It's still kind of a smooth crown, so um, it's not it's not super smooth, so it's not horrible to try and uh, un, uh, unscrew, but I just want to let you know that it does... it. It could use a little more grip. These could be a little thicker or a different type of grip. Can take a look at the dial. This is one of a few options. Uh, there are other colors available and uh, different uh, types of dials on uh, the uh, Nethens website. So you want to check that out. This is obviously the green on green. Like I said, that is a ceramic bezel insert and it is also loomed. Check out the side of the case. Of course, you have the useless helium escape valve. There's a very nice, um, I want to say that's more of like a stamped crown, uh, the way it goes down in as opposed to engraved. It's actually very nice. You can see you have a combination of brushed and polished finishes. You got high polish on the sides of the case. Very nice brushing here all around on the bronze. You got this uh, combination canvas, leather, it's leather bagged, kind of has a camo. Uh, look here about it on the uh, leather portion take a look at the case back as far as uh, finishing of the case it's actually very nice um, no issues there now um, you know at first glance I thought that the bezel because of the way it's done was going to be but it's it's not hard to grasp at all it's actually super it's actually really easy. It's probably because there's so much bezel that it's just, and it's not a very tight bezel, but it's not a, um, you know, it's not a bezel that has a lot of play. There's a touch of play in there, but not really, nothing that I would, uh, uh, you know, beyond normal uh, as far as I'm concerned or what I would consider to be an issue to uh, report on. It is a sandwich dial. Got those little hints of green there, or uh, red there, with the uh, uh, sec uh, lollipop style second hand and lava written on red. So, um, you know, if you don't, uh, you don't have a watch for Christmas yet, and you know, here you go. Uh, Santa Claus's watch. I shouldn't say that. I actually like the combination of that. It's just a little touch of red. So uh, I was, uh, you know, when I did the unboxing video, somebody commented and said, uh, because I was told beforehand that this was a, I, I, I don't even know what the word to call for it, a copy of a um, vintage VDB, uh, I think they said the VDB 14 is what it's a copy of. Um, that's interesting in the sense of um, a micro brand copying a micro brand although I remember the company Ancon uh, who also copied a VDB watch I don't remember what model that is uh, that's a weird thing so um, putting that out there you know if it bothers you it bothers you if it doesn't bother you it doesn't bother you it is what it is um, it's an interesting thing though to see micro brands copying other Micro brands usually, you know, micro brands are copying and homaging, uh, you know, watches from more of the mainstream, whether it be Seiko or Panerai's, uh, you know, etc. So, 
Um, there, there. That is, uh, if you take a look, you know, Google uh, the VDB 14. There, they are uh, very similar. Let me uh, put it here on my seven and a half inch wrist. Now, yeah, it's a chunky watch. It's a big hunk of bronze. It's you know heavy. It's thick. It's chunky, but. I think what's nice about it, in my opinion, in the sense of even though it's a big chunky watch, it still is only 50 millimeters, so uh, 50 millimeters lug to lug. So while it's 16 millimeters thick and 45 millimeters wide, it's not very long on the wrist because it has a uh, very short lugs. So yeah, it's a tall watch. It's a thick chunky watch, but if you like that, you're probably going to absolutely love this. Um, the leather strap is very stiff. The leather canvas strap it would need, uh, need some breaking in, and um, the, the the buckle is almost as wide as the watch head. Um, actually, hold on one second. I have my calipers here. Uh, let me uh, see if I could just measure the widest point here of let's see here the widest point I'm trying to do this from behind the camera I tell you 35 millimeters actually um, is what I'm getting here yeah 30 well if I squeeze it yeah about 35 so 35 millimeter wide buckle it is a huge buckle Here's the great thing. Now, I'm, I know some of you guys are like waiting for me to be negative because it's a big watch. And uh, yes, I don't wear big watches anymore. But yeah, it's a big chunky watch, but um, it, it sits comfortably on the wrist. And while I don't personally wear a lot of big chunky watches anymore, uh, a lot of people do. A lot of people still like them. And uh, this is actually a pretty nice example in terms of the finish. And while this buckle is huge, look at it it contours straight down there's no uh, rough edges there's no pointy edges it's all finished and sanded nicely it curves nicely to the wrist so while it's huge when you take a look here on my wrist it's not sticking out like a big ass pre v buckle or something it's actually contoured and actually sits to the strap so you don't feel that huge buckle so while it may look like a big massive belt buckle it does not feel like it. It's actually very comfortable. Uh, a lot of other people could take note. Uh, if you're going to do a big buckle, this is how you do it. So there we go on that. Um, you know, initially, I really wanted to say when it comes to price of this watch, I really wanted to say it was overpriced at $570. And some of you may still be thinking it's overpriced at $575. Uh, for the listed specs compared to some of the competition because it does have a Seiko NH35 automatic movement. Um, yeah, I think many would have preferred a Miyota 9015 at least or whatever. Uh, but you know, it, it is a big solid chunk of bronze. It's very well finished. Front, back, sides, case, uh, bezel, everything. Um, so you got to be okay with the movement. If you're not okay with the movement, just forget about it and move on. I mean, that's the reality. Like I always say, I never try and get you to buy a watch here. Um, I'm just coming at it kind of like rolling through my head from my perspective with it. I would, you know, almost $600. Yeah, I'd like to see, uh, you know, the movement. But as I've always said, movement's a part of it. It's not the whole package to me. There is a lot going on here that they give you, um, you know, like I said, it's a big solid chunk of bronze, it's sapphire, it's a ceramic bezel, it is all loomed, uh, very, very nicely finished case. So it is it is what it is. If you like it, you can purchase it, of course. Uh, if you don't like it, obviously you're not going to, and it makes no difference to me either way. Um, but uh, let me go ahead and uh, charge it up and we'll do a loom shot. Okay, here is a quick look at the loom. Okay, I would say that concludes the video here on the Nethens Lava. If you like what you see, you can check out the Nethens website, of course. Check us out on social media. We're on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. 
Leave a like or a comment here on YouTube. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Hit that notification bell twice because then you will never miss another review. This has been Don Evans for WatchReport.com. You can check out the full review with this, or if you really more, instead of full review, I should say, if you want to see a little bit more about that, read the written specs and a few more thoughts and comments by me on this watch, you can check it out at WatchReport.com. I'll see you guys on the next video. Thank you very much.